here's the problem. So let's try to do this as a synthesis. So the problem is, given this starting material and this product, what are the step-by-step -step reagents we would need to go from one to the other? So some techniques that would be useful. Um, the first technique is, again, this idea of numbering. Um, one thing that's very important is to find carbons in the starting material that correspond to a carbon in the product. So can you see any carbons here that you know where they ended up over here? Up there. Mm -hmm. If I point it out, which two carbons are the same? I think there's an extra. Mm -hmm. No, with the double So which is the same carbon as this one? That one. All right, so notice that this carbon has an oxygen on it. Let's call that number one. So it seems pretty likely that these two are the same carbon. Yes. So that oxygen is what we could call a landmark. So, so I'm going to put the number one here. Remember, this is not IUPAC numbering, it's just reference numbering. So this carbon with these two would be the same. And so then we try to find any other. I'm sorry, go ahead. That whole top part, Yeah. not the ring, would right. be that first thing. So we could call this two and three. And then this would be? Two. OK. This is a really crucial technique, this numbering technique. Again, this is not IUPAC numbering. It's just reference numbering to find which carbons in the starting material correspond to which carbons in the product. This is very hard. It is very difficult to find which carbons in the starting material correspond to which carbons in the product. Therefore, most students give up, and they don't do this. But that makes synthesis impossible. Even though this is hard, the only way to do synthesis is to find the carbons in the starting material that correspond to the uh, atoms in the product. All right, and then you have to look for a landmark. Well, here the obvious landmark was this oxygen. OK. Um, so uh, that would give us these carbons uh, over here. OK, very good. So that gives us that. Um, so uh, let's see here. What else are we going to do? We need a ring. Yeah, well, one Unless big thing. Carbon. Yeah, well, one big thing that um, we should see is, uh, so what what's are the changes that are happening? What changes are happening to this number one carbon? The double bond. It's not double bonded and it's connected to carbon with a ring. Yeah, it's connected to another carbon. It helps to put in a squiggly line for new bonds or bonds that are breaking. So this seems to be a very interesting bond. We need to find a way to make this bond because this bond doesn't Over exist. Here. Right yeah, because that's the only way we know to make carbon-carbon bonds. Aside from cyanide, and obviously this is not cyanide. If you see new carbon-carbon bonds, you've got to use a Grignard reagent. All right, so this would be a good case uh, maybe for a uh, retrosynthesis. So um, doing the uh, retrosynthesis uh, process uh, over here, um, we know that we got this by attacking it with a Grignard. Wait, I have a random question. Yeah. Um, for any one of any like, given one of these problems, is there more than one possible way to do it, generally? Or is there only one right way? In many cases, there could be more than one way. Sometimes there's a best way and other ways that will get you some partial credit. For example, there might be ways that give you lots of competing products, and it's best to have the fewest number of products. We saw that. Uh, but there are some cases where there's more than one good way. Uh, that'll happen more and more as the class goes on, because as the class goes on, you'll learn more and more different reactions. So there'll be more and more answers to the problem. Right now, usually, well, even now, there's sometimes more than one way. In this case, there's really only one way, though. For this type of problem, there's only one way. So this is going to be actually kind of clear cut. Now, I'm also going to number this carbon. Because clearly this is an interesting carbon to me, this carbon number four, because it's forming uh, the new bond um, over here. Uh, let's try our redraw and modify technique. Oh, so we're going to use the green yard with, that we used before. Yes. Now what's going to have an extra carbon? I think I got it. Who got it? Well, I thought I did. Me too. Thumbs up. Good. Woo. Should we keep working it through it together? Or do you guys want to write it down? Sure. I think if we make a list of all the reactions, it's going to help so much. Like all of them. Okay. 
Good. So all I've done here is just redraw the product. I'm using redraw and modify. Now I want some way to form this bond. So I'm going to erase this bond. So we know we're, we want to have, uh, we're doing this with the Grignard. So what did this number one carbon look like before it was attacked by the Grignard? Negative. I mean positive. Uh, partial. Which one? What did, what did the number one carbon look like originally, basically? Well, yeah, it was a carbonyl. Oh, so I'm going to erase this bond and say that originally this was a carbonyl. Okay, and how about this guy um, over here? So, uh, we, uh, who do we want to who do we want to be the nucleophilic carbon? The number four carbon. The number four. So I'll just dab that negative charge in there. and write that as a Grignard. So um, here's the Grignard that we want to attack this. Here's the Grignard that we want to attack this. I think a lot of you guys were worried that you said, gee, where did this extra carbon come from here? Um, well, it just came from this Grignard that we added. Um, there's no reason why the, uh, why the negative charge has to be on the ring. There's no reason it can't be on a methyl attached to the ring. So the hard part is figuring out where to put the negative charge. And that's where it was so useful to focus on this bond. This is the bond we had to form, so we need to put the negative charge on this number four carbon. That's the guy we want to attack the number one carbon over here. Okay, so uh, that gave us that. So um, we got that, magnesium bromide. All right, so now we should be able, I think, to go through the whole steps. So what's the answer to this problem? What would you write as the answer? One MgBr with the cyclic ring with, uh, with methyl on the top. So this would be the first step, All right? Step one would be right this. there as well. Ah, I forgot about that. Good point. So you need a solvent. And then number two would be something that could H3O. Yeah, you can't forget that. Otherwise, we'd end up with an O minus here, and we want an OH. Um, all right, so we have to add step two as the H3O plus, and this is our answer over here. Everything else that we wrote was just thought processes that would help us to get to the answer here. Notice how we were kind of working simultaneously in two directions. We were trying to move from the starting material towards the right, but I was also trying to move from the product towards the left. Again, it's like a puzzle, and you have to make the two ends meet, and you have to use your judgment at each point as to which end is the most useful to work on. However, most students' instinct is to focus too much on moving forward from the starting materials, and they should try more to work backwards from the product. That's all that the word retrosynthesis means again. Retrosynthesis just means working backwards from the product. Okay, so um, the techniques that are important here are using these reference numbers in the um, synthesis problem. Now, I didn't number everything. I numbered the carbons that I could find that corresponded in one picture to the other. So notice it would be useless to only number the starting materials. I have to number the starting material and then try to find the corresponding numbers in the product. And then I made up a new number for this number four carbon over here. Here's something else that would be useless. It would be useless, it would be useless to call these carbons five, six, and seven. You don't, you don't want brand new numbers for them because these are the same carbons as this. When carbons are the same carbon, you want to use the same number. So these are the same numbers. The whole point of the numbers is to tell you which carbons in one picture are the same as which carbons in the other picture. The key to synthesis is knowing which carbons in the starting materials correspond to which carbons in the product. And then you can ask, how did those carbons change? The key was to ask, how is the number one carbon changing? Well, it's changing by forming a bond with the number four uh, over here. Uh, let's find this on the alcohol reduction uh, handout. Um, so where's our starting material on the alcohol oxidation and reduction handout? On the left. Which compound is this in this table? What type of compound aldehyde. is it? Aldehyde. This is an aldehyde. So this would be around the second row. This is an aldehyde. And uh, what's our product? Where's this? Alcohol. What type of alcohol? The alpha carbon here is attached to two carbon chains. This is secondary. So what path did we follow in the table there? We went from an alcohol to a secondary, uh, we went from an aldehyde to a secondary alcohol. Alde uh, we went from a uh, aldehyde down into the left to a secondary alcohol. Am I getting that right? No. By adding R minus, did I make a mistake? Yes. 
By adding R minus two and aldehyde, you get a primary alcohol. Then you add. Now, that's if you. Add, I'm sorry. That's if you start with formaldehyde, oh. which is a very special aldehyde with only hydrogens. Oh. We don't usually start there. We actually start with a normal aldehyde down oh, here. Oh, I didn't right? see that. Aldehyde. Yeah, formaldehyde is an aldehyde, but it doesn't come up very much. This is a weird aldehyde with only hydrogens on it. So that's just there for completeness. This is where we're usually going to be. And then we went down to the secondary alcohol. So again, it might help when you're doing these problems to, as a backup, keep going back to the table and see how we're uh, going around the table. All the problems I've given you maybe are a little too easy because we're only moving one step to the table. Maybe on the test you might have to move two or three steps. Although, again, it's hard for me to know because uh, I don't know how much you're expected to know before the next midterm and how much is, of this is going to be on the final. Um, but uh, you might be expected to go maybe two or three steps here, basically. Okay. But uh, anyway, these are the basics here for uh, using a Grignard reagent. Maybe this is enough for now for Grignards, and you need to uh, kind of digest this.